Eat the rich. It's the show. Hey, babe. Yes, Tiger. What do you call a fish with no eye? Damn. Normally I'd make a joke right now, or tell you a story that I'm pretending happened, but in actuality it didn't. Or I'd tell you a story that did actually happen, but embellish it to make everything a bit more dramatic. Today, I don't think I can do that. The subject matter of this game is incredibly close to home right now. I'm not doing an accessibility breakdown of this game. Instead, I'm doing another art review. And so, less than a day after the death of my grandfather, I'm scripting this look at Old Man's Journey. Beware, for there may be spoilers ahead. Released on the 18th of May by Broken Rules, Old Man's Journey is a short but sweet single-player interactive story experience with a simplistic environmental manipulation puzzle element. Gameplay-wise, there isn't a great amount to the experience. Your task is to raise and lower the terrain on screen in order to allow the titular old man to get from point A to the not always obvious point B. The way I described it to Sam Sam was as a 2D walking simulator where you not only do the walking but also create the path. And so, while you shouldn't go into this expecting hardcore puzzling action, if you understand that this is about the journey itself, you'll more than likely appreciate what it has to offer. The story of Old Man's Journey is told not through dialogue, but through scenery, sound, and flashbacks. The visual style is reminiscent of expressionist landscapes, and each individual scene, especially its background, is beautifully painted. At times it feels like you're moving through a series of paintings of the French countryside. The colour palette chosen, made up primarily of tones that feel earthy or natural even with the blues and greens, creates a sense of nostalgia which helps to solidify the sentimentality of the journey you're undertaking. The music is simple and subtle, repetitive but not to the point of frustration or distraction. Combined with the sound effects scattered liberally throughout the scenes, they add a sense of place to the environment. The tinkling of sheep bells, the rolling of waves, and the gentle ambiance of a low-key chill-out loop bring provincial France to life. To enhance this living feeling, you are able to interact with various elements of the stage in ways that don't affect gameplay at all. Think old-school childhood interactive fiction classics like Grandma and Me. So as you pass by a garage, for instance, you can open the door and interact with a girl inside who's fixing her bicycle. These little elements make your time spent in these places feel more personal. You're not simply going through the motions to reach your journey's end, but can truly engage with the world around you, like an old man very well might. The pacing of play adds another layer to the artistic merit of old man's journey. The old man moves at a pace befitting someone of his age, meaning that play becomes partially an exercise in patience, in taking stock of your surroundings and appreciating the time that you have. You're not meant to rush through this. It's a slow down, life is to be savoured type of deal, no matter how urgent your mission may be. The mission in question is not explicitly stated when you begin, and neither is the history of the old man. Instead, you learn about his life through a series of flashbacks, memories triggered by events and scenes you encounter. And while I won't spoil these for you, the story of the old man is what made this so touching for me. Sometimes you can't say or do things, no matter how much you want to, and this leads you to do things that you might later regret. Old Man's Journey is $8 on Steam, or $15 if you get the soundtrack bundle. There's a link in the comments, and on screen now-ish. Hey babe, yes, what do you call a deer? With no eye. No idea. Ugh. What are you trying to do? Everybody, everybody.
weird because Sam got it from Japan. I came from Japan and Tiger got it from Japan. Somebody got candy from Japan. And we're going to eat it. The first thing we're going to eat, I'm going to get my assistant to pick up. Oh, Sam's going to pick it up. I've got assistance for this. This is it. I don't know what it is, but it's Sam smelted and I smelt it. And it smells like, um, what does it smell like? I wish I could tell you what it smells like. It smells like pain. It smells like pain! I love pain! I love inflicting pain. Would you break it in half? No? You can't... You, tiger's dating it. Oh, look, you got it! Oh, hey, wow. Show them the inside. It looks like gross. Awesome! Give it to me. Give it, put it in my hand. There. Look, I'm eating it! Now I'm gonna give it to my assistant, and my assistant, who is called Lachlan, is gonna eat it too. Look, take it. Look, there's Lachlan's hand! Just shut up and eat the thing. It's actually really nice. It's, it is. Oh my god, it tastes like brown butter. No, what's that stuff good? Brown sugar! Yes. Mm. You're fucking delicious. Silence. Now we're gonna eat the second thing, which is gonna be, um, is this, this, this comes in a special packet, which I'm gonna get Lachlan to hold up. Here we go. There. It's called Wasabi Nori, and I think it's a fish snack that's flavored like um, wasabi and seaweed. Break it! I, I don't know if this one's going to break. Break it! Oh, no. Yeah! It, it's it, sticky. I'm, I, I, I got, I, I wash my hands after. <laughs> Me. I did this! I grabbed it! Okay, now take it up. Thank you. Oh, it's stuck to my fur. I, I told you it was sticky. Yeah, well, why would I listen to you? Eat it! Wait, mother of Jesus! It's kind of tough. I like eating hot leather! <laughs> it's really, um, it definitely has wasabi. Definitely wasabi, it's just, that's about it. And fish! There is, um, it was like eating hot leather, hot fishy, seaweedy leather. Why did you make me eat that? You gross. He's gross. Say goodbye to the people. Bye. Bye. Take me down to the paradox city where the grass is green and Pinocchio says my nose will grow. What happens? Hey babe. Yes, Tiger. What do you call a deer with no legs and no eye? Sandra. Still no idea, got you!